and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my review of a watch that is a very strong contender for the title of Dial of the Year 2022. Now, I know it's only September, but this is one of the nicest looking tiles I've seen all year. In fact, it is one of the neatest looking watches that I've seen all year, full stop, never mind just the dial, and it's by Citizen. If you'd asked me which of the affordable Japanese brands makes the best dials, I would have said, not Citizen, I would have said without hesitation, Seiko made the best dials. In fact, last year's 2021 Dial of the Year award, if I had given one, would have gone to this Seiko Alpinist Ginza SPB259. That thing looked absolutely stunning with a striking dial pattern that emulated the cobblestones of Tokyo's vibrant Ginza district. I've looked at a bunch of other Seikos with dials that were far, far nicer than they should have been considering the money Seiko charged for them. And I just can't say the same about Citizen. Stunning and striking are not words that I would have associated with the dials on the Citizens that I have reviewed. Cluttered and intense would have been words that came to mind more readily instead, especially this Blue Angels with its anxiety inducing 145 numerals, 195 letters and 499 markings. So the simplicity and the beauty of this one came as an unexpected surprise. But it doesn't belong to me and that means that I owe someone a thank you. And it's probably a name that you're familiar with by now, Gary from Birmingham. Yes, that's right, he's bought another one. Fresh off the back of the Ming 17.09 that I looked at only a few weeks ago, Gary has been shopping again and picked up this lovely JDM Citizen. We live a few suburbs apart here in Sydney and there's now a well-worn path between our two houses with various pickups and drop-offs that have occurred over the last couple of years. Thank you once again, Gary. So what exactly did he buy this time and how lovely is that dial? Let's flip the camera and find out. First of all, my apologies. My voice is a little bit Barry White today. I've been sick all week, but the show must go on because Google Ads pays my rent. Anyway, I'll talk about price and availability of this specific watch a little later on in the video. But before I do, you tell me, have a look at this thing. Leave me a comment, let me know how much you think a dial this nice is worth. How much a watch this nice, so damn sharp looking is worth. I'll be interested to see the range of prices, the kind of window, if you will, that people suggest for this one. Anyway, I'm gonna cluster my footage into three distinct groups today because I think this watch has three distinct characters, if you will. The first, these static shots. You know, this style, the stuff I normally do. Medium distance with a bit of zoom or a bit of pan. I think it looks good in these shots. The second is super close-ups with my Sony macro lens. I think the watch and the dial has a whole different character here. And you begin to see how unique looking it is, all of the colors, all of the textures in that handmade and hand-finished silver lacquer leaf dial. I think it looks great in these shots. And finally, the dynamic shots. The shots of this watch either in my hand or on my wrist. When you can see the light play, you can see how well finished the hands and indices are. You can see the clarity of that sapphire crystal, how perfect the case is done. I think the watch looks amazing in these shots. More of all three shots later. But first, the packaging. Pretty ordinary small black cardboard box. Because this is a JDM, you're really looking at one year return to base warranty. I don't imagine you'll have too many issues with this one, especially not with the movement though. It's definitely a known quantity. Dimensions then. A lot of JDM watches, especially in this dressy air style, do tend to be a little bit smaller. Think Seiko Saab and you're on the right track here. This Citizen has a great set of dimensions. I measure it at 38.2 mil in diameter. It's 12.4 mil thick though, so it does have a bit of presence on wrist. Thanks to in no small part, a lovely piece of double dome sapphire crystal. Lug tip to lug tip is exactly 46 mil. Now lug width is an awkward, but I think appropriate 19 mil. And on the supplied leather strap with butterfly style deployant, it weighs in at 70 grams on the nose. Let's go straight in for a look at this leather strap then. It's dark blue, which I think is a good choice here for this kind of green blue dial. Black would have been dull. Green might have been a bit too much and therefore limit this one's potential use. Tapers from 19 all the way down to 15 at the clasp. Now the clasp is a standard high polished stainless steel number with the Citizen brand name just printed on top. Now I have got a seven inch wrist and I only had two more holes available. 
This being a JDM model is clearly pitched at those with 7.5 inch wrists or downwards. Therefore, 19mm is awkward, but if you're trying to get the proportions perfect, then sometimes you've got to be a little bit awkward as a manufacturer, and Citizen love to do odd rather than even lug widths, it seems. I think the case finish is exceptional. It's all stainless steel, but has a Duratect coating applied, Citizen's own proprietary coating, which should hopefully keep this one scratch free. But if you remember Gary's Ming from last month, he walloped it a few times on a drunken night out, so I'm not sure Duratect will protect this one from Gary, but most normal people should receive a fair degree of scratch resistance from it. It features a nice high polish undercut where the case back screws in, then a fine horizontal brush running lug to lug, then a high polish section also running lug to lug, followed by more brushing on the upper lug surfaces. So polish brush, polish brush, followed by a two-step high polished fixed bezel with the double dome sapphire nestling into it. Unsigned crown though, bit of a disappointment if not entirely a surprise. I've been eyeing up Citizen's Chrono Master range and you don't get a signed crown there for over two grand. This one is much less than two grand by the way, but the crystal is fantastic. Really beautiful sapphire, allowing you to see the dial and those faceted indices very, very clearly. The movement then, well, I said it was a known quantity. It's a Miota 9011. This is an in-house derivation of the 9000 series, so 24 joule, hacking and hand winding, but the rotor does only wind in one direction, so you do get that spinning and the wobble that comes with the spinning. Nicely decorated though, with a bit more engraving than you would find on a regular 9015, and a slightly unusual asymmetric skeletonized rotor. Tolerances of these are minus 10 to plus 20 seconds per day. But let's have another look at the dial. Let's have a nice long look at the dial if I'm claiming this to be the nicest dial that I've seen so far this year. They actually do this watch in two variants, silver and this blue-green one. Both feature handmade dials using silver leaf lacquer technique. Silver leaf, oddly enough, is applied by hand to a base metal dial. The silver leaf is further coated by a thin layer of pigmentation. That gives it the seemingly infinite range of colors you can see here. Then the dial is lacquered to seal it again oddly enough, and to help add the shine that you see here. The result is that every dial is unique, but I still think it's a really subtle effect. I mean, have a look at that Seiko Ginza dial again in comparison. Beautiful and striking, but anything but subtle. And I think the citizens' hands and indices keep that low-key theme happening. Very simple, but rather tall applied batons, double at 12, large singles at the three and the six and the nine, slimmer singles everywhere else. They have a brushed upper surface with polished faceted edges. It's a great handset. I'm a sucker now for this half-half finish on Dauphine hands. So half high polish and half frosted finish. Not only does it look great, but it also adds legibility. There's no loom though, which slightly dents this one as an all-rounder, especially considering it has a slightly unexpected 100 meters of water resistance. This thing is so pretty though, I'm not sure it really is the kind of watch that you want to swim in the sea with anyway. On wrist, it wears really, really nicely. I've got an average seven inch wrist for your reference. This 38 to 39 mil size is a real sweet spot for me. And if I've got an average size wrist, then it's gonna be a real sweet spot for most of you as well, considering that wrist size, like everything else, sits on a bell curve. There is a big old taper, as mentioned, in the leather strap from 19 all the way down to 15 at the clasp. Again, I think this just adds a more elegant look on wrist. And at 70 grams, it's not gonna be a taxing watch to wear. Very, very comfortable overall. And very elegant looking. I feel underdressed today in my shorts and t-shirt. Perhaps I should have been in linen shorts and a polo shirt, therefore. 19 mil, as discussed, is not gonna be as versatile in terms of what straps you can buy for it, or more likely, what straps you've already bought for something else. I've got a few 19s myself, but not everybody does. That makes the supplied strap even more important, so it's just as well that it's a good one. Moans and niggles. Well, the non-standard lug width really has to go on there today. And the unsigned crown, regardless of what excuse the brand gives or what excuse people make for the brand, doesn't exactly exude luxury, does it? And if you're buying one from overseas, which you are because this is a JDM model, then you're stuck with a JDM warranty. One year return to base that base being Japan. For sure, any watchmaker worth their salt would be able to service or repair a 9000 series Miyota, but a DOA would necessitate an RTB, which would be a PITA. But that's not really an extensive list of moans and niggles, is it? How much does one of these bad boys cost then? Well, they're just under 700 US dollars. That seems to be the going rate regardless of where you buy it from. Gary paid just over a grand Aussie to get his here last month. Is that what you thought? Did you guess higher, did you guess lower, or did you guess spot on? 
I think it's quite tricky to price these because they're fairly simple in some ways, but really well done in a lot of different areas. I'm not saying that this one's price is particularly expensive, certainly not for a handcrafted, hand-finished dial as pretty as this one, but it's not particularly cheap either. It is beautifully well executed, but it does only come on a leather strap, and you can pick up a Miyota 9015 in a watch at $150, so it's not a massively expensive movement either. I guess then there are two ways of looking at this Citizen. You either look up or you look down. If you look down, it's a very nice but slightly expensive alternative to the Seagull Presage line of watches. They tend to be between four and $600, but not as nicely done as this Citizen. If instead you look up, this could be viewed more as a viable, affordable alternative to a Grand Seiko rather than a Presage. I think the case finish, the dial, the hands, the indices, none of that, none of that would look out of place at all if you swap those brand logos over. Which brings us on to the final point today, brand. How much would you pay for a Citizen? I've been looking at their high-end stuff, as I said, and it really is lovely, so nicely done, but it has the same brand on the dial as your shopping mall, $99 EcoDrive. Seiko have worked hard on branding over the last few years, properly separating off Grand Seiko and also differentiating the Presage line from the Prospects line and so on. Perhaps Citizen need to do something similar to help us locate these watches within their range and therefore to help set our expectations for them. However, this watch today, in terms of the dial at least, certainly exceeded my expectations. So there you have it, another JDM stunner, but this time not from Casio or Seiko, but from Citizen. Not cheap if you compare it to the Seiko Presage range, very cheap if you compare it to Grand Seiko. While you're here, why not have a look at one of each, both owned by Gary, his Ginza, Presage and his 9F Quartz Grand Seiko. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all in a future video, I hope.